I'm SirTapTap, and let's play Earth Tongue, a video game by Eric Hermit. A free copy of this was provided to me by THE Eric Hermit. Copyright 2000. Hi, Parker. You knew I was recording, didn't you? You just... you just know that, don't you? Parker will be assisting us. This is a simple, like, mushroom vivarium. We're gonna start a new planet here. You can use keyboard controls, but you mostly want to use the mouse. Hello, Parker. And let's see, do we even start with plants, Parker? Yeah, here, there we go. So what happens in this game is little mushrooms and stuff grow. And your cat stands in front of you. You you're going down. Okay. There you go. Little mushrooms grow and little bugs come around and eat them and other stuff. I guess we just have the two. And so time passes, you've got nutrients in the ground, that's what these bright, not quite white spots are. Biomass is just the amount of plants you've got. Then you've got these interventions where you can import, let's import a new fungus. So that the question mark is just a random one, and you can specify which one you want, but it'll cost more. Since we're just starting out, we just want to use the cheap ones. And this game has a research journal. I've already played quite a bit, but uh, let's take a peek at the first one. So the research journal has uh, the entry, the numbered entries are basically hints that you unlock as you play the game. Most of them happen pretty much without effort. The final one, which you might consider quote unquote beating the game, requires biodiversity of 17, which is basically just everything. But basically, you're some non-specific entity that wants to grow rich and diverse life on this planet. And you can just randomly cause events. Um, there are random weather, bug, and plant imports. None of them are especially common. That's why you slowly regenerate these interventions, which lets you do like what I did and imported that green mold here. Nothing much happens at the start. Where's that? Oh, hey, bugs. You can pick up bugs, but not plants. And these rhino beetles here eat fungus. And they're not too bright. So what you want to do is pick up the first few and lead them to plants. They will eat things to extinction. So you want to be sort of careful where you place them. Like, I wouldn't want to place them on that green mold because they'll probably kill it. And this one, I'm sort of iffy on him over here. And you want to sort of feed them on the middle parts if you want something to grow. And you can also, you know, use them to trim up, use bugs to trim up the edges if you want, like, say you wanted this to not grow over here, you could spam bugs over there. But we're just going to let things be for now, we're just going to speed up things. You can speed up, so you can see stuff grows. These guys are not smart and can't climb very high. In fact, I'll let you read their entry, it's kind of grim. They are unable to climb walls, so they must climb over the bodies of other bugs. So if a bunch of corpses pile up, they'll climb over each other's own bodies. Slightly grim, but hey. And these guys, these guys are basically trapped until corpses pile up, allowing them to escape. Which is, can be good, can be bad. Yellow mold immigrated. Oh no, that's probably old. The latest output is always shown down here. And so the random weather, you can have... If you pick random weather, five things can happen. You can have the stars aligned, which gives you extra interventions. You can have rainfall, which just kind of happened there. You can have a drought. You can have nutrients, extra nutrients fall. And you can have wind kick up spores. It's not extinct to that, buddy. Starting out is a little bear. In fact, we might just want to spam some more fungus types instead of bothering too much with bugs. There are slight differences in all of the different plants. Like, let's take a look at pink mold. Pink mold is the most common and basic one. It just kind of grows on a horizontal thing. And it really doesn't get too much high, you know, too... It doesn't move vertically too much. Clue mold, slightly different. Basically, it's just more efficient. 
Then there's these blue mushrooms, which we don't have yet. They grow very tall vertically and have really cool root systems that grow randomly, and they're really fun to watch, in my opinion. And so this game is really more just like a chill out sort of game. The random generation is a little annoying in that it kind of seems to give me the same stuff that I already have fairly often, but I'm sure that's just randomness being random. Ugh. See, these guys will eat you to extinction, so it's good not to have too many bugs too soon. And one annoying thing is you can't really influence where the fungus grow. Like blue mushroom, those are fairly hardy, so those will probably live if we can find them. The mushrooms, you can't determine where they'll be, you know, pop in. So they can go extinct almost immediately if they happen to spawn where a bug is and the bug eats it. Because they start as a single tile, so that's a bit annoying. Bugs, you can usually just pause the game and pick up the bug and place it somewhere. We're just going to leave that beetle extinct for now. Maybe this little snail will be a bit more manageable. Oh, let's play some here. See, that's what I said about that. The blue mushroom is, of what I've seen, one of the best growing ones and hardest to get rid of. And it looks pretty nice with the tall vertical things and uh, it randomly grows at sprouts, so this is pretty shallow so you can't see too much of the, you know, growth spurting action. Here's a nice pile of beetle carcasses. You can move any bug, including a dead bug, so we're just going to put these beetles over here for nutrients so they can feed this green mold here. Hello, Parker. What's up? Yes, hi. So we're probably just going to let the world sit here for a minute. Let's put on some random weather. I can't see, Parker. Oops. Yeah, rainfall is good. Throwing spores skyward, I think, is supposed to make stuff grow more, but it hasn't. It doesn't really seem to do too much, obviously. So I'm just gonna let this world sit. The, in my opinion, the optimal way to play this game, if you want to call it that, is like leave it open in a window. Ideally, this is a two plus monitor game. You just leave it open in a window and do other stuff, and you just kind of peek in like it's your own little ant farm, except with mushrooms and bugs and stuff. So we're just going to let time skip forward here for a bit. Alright, these guys. So, all the bugs and all the plants work slightly different. Some bugs are omnivorous, some are carnivorous, some only eat plants. The mantis is a very annoying one in that it only eats bugs and nothing else eats it. The mantis is what I'm holding here. You probably don't even want mantises to live until you have a pretty good bug population. Let's save these guys. Also, you get research entries for having animals or plants survive for 5,000 years each. And so that's how I filled most of my journal already. So let's just put this guy where he can starve to death. Mantises you really don't want to screw with. Mantises and locusts, I found, are really, really hard to get rid of if they grow up too big too fast. Also, that mantis, I didn't even intervene for that mantis. I was just letting the game idle and I just noticed him. They can... That'll happen where stuff will randomly immigrate. It's fairly uncommon, but it will happen. So if something kind of dangerous like that immigrates, you might want to locate it and isolate it. Or if you have a bug infestation, you might want to place it near it. Like these guys are really good if you have like a ton of rhinoceros beetles that are killing a bunch of plants that you do want to live, then by all means go and use these guys to slaughter those beetles to save your plants. Finally, a new mushroom type. 
I'm not sure if there are different rarities and like some things are just harder to get than others. Why are you wandering over here? Not sure I can't pick that guy up. Just leave all those guys there. Where did the pink mushroom? Oh, there we go. Also another thing, it's kind of hard to support all the different mushroom kinds because stuff like this will happen where these guys, the green mold here is trapped and it's basically just going to be stuck because these mushrooms on either side. <laughs> the game's a pretty simple chill out sort of thing and... Oh. That'll be why nothing's happening, it's on regular speed. But it would be nicer to have more world creation options. I'm not sure how much the dev plans to grow it, if any. But, uh... One thing I would love is bigger worlds. And maybe cheat codes, or maybe the ability to have more interventions or something, because, like... Um... My main problem is I want more biodiversity, and it's, like... Really hard to support it all at once, I guess that's kind of the point. But it'd be sort of fun for like a just for fun mode where you can just completely screw around. There's that mantis that I kind of wanted dead, so that's good. Alright, we'll just leave the world to its devices. Even at max speed, it's not super fast, so that's why I do recommend you just leave it and sort of watch it idly. Like you wouldn't ant farm, pretty much. It's your digital ant farm. Alright, let's take a look at a much more advanced planet here. This is my original playthrough here. So it's going slow. So this is kind of what I was talking about, about mantises and locusts sort of taking over the place. Still got way too many mantises. I think mantises and locusts are the only bugs that have survived. My biodiversity is kind of low as a result. Not sure where any of those ended up. So let's toss in some bugs. One thing, the bugs seem to spawn on the same screen that you're currently at. The mushrooms do not, which makes them very difficult to deal with, because you can't move mushrooms and you can't specify where they go to begin with, so they're very hard to cultivate properly. Bugs, that's not a problem with at all. Like, it'd be kind of nice if you could just pick a general area, like, if the mushroom just always spawned on the screen you're on, kind of like the bugs seem to, and that already would be a big step up. So, let's go over the bugs we got here. Rhino beetle's pretty basic herbivores. Sometimes they'll kill other bugs, the weaker ones. Roaches eat dead bugs, which is good because I've got a giant pile of them. Mantises are jerks and they kill any other bug. Not usually wasps, though. Wasps are pretty hard to kill. Because they fly on stuff. Let's just leave all those jerks over there. I'm not entirely sure what makes your interventions grow faster or not. No! See, that's what I'm talking about. Frickin' bugs and immediately ate the plant that I just spent two intervention points to grow. It's probably my single biggest problem with the game is that it's very hard to cultivate stuff that just grows up, like here. Is the music even? I guess it's just being quiet. Yeah, it's pretty hard to protect the plants that you've just made. See, there's green mold. I didn't even remember it appearing. What do you want? You want some you want some rain? Will that help? It's a brown pot. No, get out of here. So once your biodiversity is taking a nosedive, like I used to be steadily above ten with plants all over. But all these mantises and locusts are kind of making it difficult. 
you can eventually get a mass extinction. I guess that happens when all of your biodiversity ends. I still haven't had that happen, fortunately. But I'm not sure what happens when that happens because you can always just intervene more because your intervention points just constantly keep growing. <laughs> One funny thing about these locusts, they just po end up with huge piles of corpses. So you can just use roaches to eat those up. And see, this is one of my favorite things about the game, the erratic growths of the blue mushrooms. The pink mushrooms grow only to climb, like, if they're next to a big vertical shaft of dirt, they'll climb up, otherwise they don't. And their roots only grow vertical, so they're kind of boring, honestly. What other kind of plants do we have? And all the molds grow fairly similar. I guess all my molds went extinct. That's another problem. The molds and the pods aren't especially hardy and resistant to bug attack. So you'll fairly often end up with something like this with tons of the blue mushrooms and to a lesser extent pink mushrooms. Like not everything has equal survivability. But it's still fun to relax and see how your stuff grows. So it's still fairly slow even at max speed. So it's definitely a game you want to grow, little dude, grow. Ah. Do you just need more water? Barker, you're making this difficult. Let's see, for four bucks, it's a neat little relaxing thing to watch. And you can make a new world. I don't think there's an actual reset button in game. Higher biodiversity is only 12. Pretty poor biomass, too. Um, to make a new save, all you have to do is remove the map data file or just rename it so you can keep it back up in the same folder that you have Earth Tongue. And so you can have multiple save files if you want that way. I'm not sure. If you can, like, I'm not sure what happens when you run out of biodiversity. We've only got four. Yeah, my main problems with the game are not being able to plant mushrooms directly, them thus dying very, very quickly after being spawned. So it's pretty hard to build up your biodiversity due to that. Like, even if, and if you try to make them directly, like, it's way more expensive and they can still die almost instantly. And these locusts and frickin' manises are almost impossible to get rid of. Even with a world full of mantises that should be killing the locusts, like, they'll just eat their own buddies' corpses and, I don't know, just never seem to disappear. While lots of other bugs, like, will starve in a minute or two after spawning them if you don't take good care of them. That's why we end up with a, bo a barren, sad landscape here. And also, one other thing is the big differences in survivability of the different plants. Like, I tend to end up with just tons of these blue mushrooms. And they're really cool, but I want more diversity. But half of the stuff I try to grow just dies instantly. But, uh... It's still a pretty cool little vivarium. See, 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 that's, that's pretty frustrating. It's, the game's done for now. This is technically pre-release, but it releases as of when this video is published. Um, the developer has said they may, he may or may not update it. See, I can't even find my mushrooms. It was, this world was going really well. I should have copied it when it was doing, there we go. I should have copied it was doing well, because it, it is really cool environment when it goes well. It reminds me sort of of the Badman games, AKA, what did I do to deserve this, my lord? They're like, you build a dungeon with its own ecosystem. It's really hard to maintain, but really cool. And it just kind of shows you how hard it is to delicately balance an ecosystem. Oh, hey, brown pod. 
The pod mushrooms are honestly kind of boring, but I still like having the diversity. They're just sort of flat growths, and they don't spread very well. I think that's the main problem with a lot of the mushroom varieties, is they just don't spread very much, whereas the pink ones and the blue ones have a better tendency to spread. Uh, speaking of the devil, the pink ones just died. Yeah, this is what pods look like, it's not super exciting. But there's also red pods, which we haven't seen at all. They look like meat trees, kind of, which is excellent. But it's pretty fun to... My favorite part, honestly, well, one of them, is getting to read all these different little notes as things happen. And you get to read all the biographies of all the different animals. And that's one of my favorite things about like any bestiary, I always want to read up like on any made up complete bullcrap lore that whoever decided to put in there. Like I don't care how relevant it is to the frickin' story. I just love just all of these impressions of these animals to make the world seem complete. And it sort of makes you like a researcher too in this game. But yeah, that is Earth Tongue. It's four dollars on itch.io by Eric Kermit, you can go check it out right now.